Hey guys, it's me again and in today's video we're going to make some stylized muzzle flashes like these. Now a couple of things before we start the video. You can't really learn to make a realistic muzzle flash because every handgun, AR or a sniper has a different muzzle flash in terms of smoke, fire, shape, size, form. You know, there are different factors involved. But what you can do is learn to make the basic structure and that's what this video is about. Now in this video you might see some previews in Blender. They might look a little different from my final product. That's because my PC isn't that powerful to run Blender and OBS at the same time. So resolution of my domain is set to 32. If you increase the resolution after you've finalized everything to like 128 or 512, whatever you want, your simulation will look really much better. Now I went through an interesting research and development process of making a muzzle flash on my own. It all started with me just thinking if it was even possible. So I did some tinkering with Blender and five or seven minutes later, I came up with this. Now to make this effect, what I did was I brought an icosphere in my scene. I animated the sphere by adding keyframes to its scale and location, went to objects, quick effects and quick smoke. Scaled down the domain cube to the size of my smoke puff, keyframed the surface emission value from 1.5 back to 0 so it only produces smoke while it's moving. Make sure to check the initial velocity. Set the gravity to 0 in field weights of domain. I gave it a basic texture, added a collision object to act as a bullet passing through. In the domain settings, I enabled dissolve, noise and vorticity. And there you go. Now looking at the final product, I thought, okay, so it's possible but was missing that oomph or the impact of a muzzle flash. So I thought, okay, I should look at references. And I started searching YouTube for slow motion muzzle flashes. Now the first video I found was this. And I was sort of surprised because it was almost similar to what I had made. But I started looking up more videos and I came up to the conclusion that we discussed earlier in the video that all muzzle flashes are different. Some were only smoke, some were only fire, and some were both. There was one thing that I noticed was common about all the muzzle flashes, the initial smoke burst. In every muzzle flash, you would notice an initial smoke burst and following that would come the bullet and the main explosion. So this time I knew exactly what I wanted. So I went back into Blender and started working at it again. Now I wanted everything to be real world scale. So I brought in a model of a gun, which is real world scale. This way I don't have to worry about you know scale in terms of centimeters or meters. I just have a barrel of a gun which I know is the correct size and I can just use it as a reference. So I followed the same steps from before. I scaled up and changed the location of a UV sphere. And then I went to objects, quick effects, quick smoke. I scaled down the domain to fit the size of my smoke puff again. I enabled initial velocity. I also keyframed surface emission to start from 0, then increase to 1.5, then go back to 0. I increased the sampling substeps to 6 because I thought I might need some extra calculation between frames because it's a quick animation. I increased the vorticity, enabled dissolve and changed the time to 15. I then went to field weights and reduced the gravity to zero. In my cache settings, I changed the type to all and end frame to 50. I then baked my animation. Now I wanted to look at my simulation in real world environment. So I added an HDRI and gave it a rough texture. For that what I did, I used a volume info node, ran density through a color ramp into a emission color. And now I can see my smoke clearly. Now the smoke doesn't look as good as it looked in my final renders but trust me these are the exact settings I used in the final renders. All you need to do is increase your domain resolution from 32 to 128 or 64 whatever your PC can handle. I'm gonna select my smoke domain and the sphere that's making smoke and press M and add them to a new collection. I'm gonna call it initial smoke. I'm going to disable this collection so that this collection does not affect my new domain which is going to be an explosion. Now for the final explosion I followed the exact same steps but I increased the size of UV sphere considerably more. Almost to the size of my gun because I want a huge explosion in front of my barrel. In the fluid settings of my sphere I enabled initial velocity and changed it to 2 because I want this explosion to be faster than the one before. 
I also increased the sampling substeps like I did before. Then I went to the flow source and this time I used surface emission of 2 and keyframed it back to 0. I'm then going to enable dissolve in my domain settings and change the time to 40. I'm then going to change my cache to all and set my frames to whatever I need. I'm then going to bake my simulation. Now you see the smoke is rising up, which we don't want. That is because we haven't set gravity to zero. We're going to field weights and set the gravity to zero and bake it again. Now I want to be able to look at it properly. So I'm going to go to my render settings, go all the way down to film and click on transparent. Now let's add a basic shader to this smoke as well. I'm going to change the color to bright orange so that it looks a little bit like flame. I'll enable noise, reduce the scale a little bit because we don't need a lot of noise. I'm going to also increase a little bit of vorticity. I'm going to bake it again. Now it looks more like an explosion. I'm going to increase my cache so I can look at it better. I'm going to beg it again and let's see how it looks. But now we notice that the smoke is lingering in our domain. For that what we'll do is we'll decrease the time of our dissolve and bake it again. Now that looks a little bit better. You can play with these settings all day long and you'll find different results again and again. I'm going to add all the textures, HDRI, lights. I'm going to bake the simulations at a higher resolution. Let's see what that gives us. So here's my simulation baked at a resolution of 128. I'm not really sure because I just left the room and it was done when I came back. I also added a bullet in my scene and converted it into a collision object, gave it some thickness so it reacts with the smoke. By the way, I know that the shell is not supposed to come out with the bullet, but I was just too lazy or tired to, you know, separate the geometry and animate them both separately. The only problem I had with this simulation was the smoke has a really defined spherical shape. I believe it's because my emitter is a perfect sphere. To tackle this what I did was I scaled down my sphere in the Y space. I also used a snake hook brush in the sculpt mode to add some deformities to it and gave it some sort of asymmetry. And when you simulate your smoke again it looks much much better and cooler. If you happen to like this video, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.